I'm going to create a three-dimensional triad where there's a x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. In CAD, this would be called the right-hand rule. It's often used just to help you identify the direction of the three axes that you can be uh, using as you work. Um, but the reason for me doing this is to illustrate the power of the adaptive point used in adaptive components. So if I say under families, new conceptual mass, adaptive component, and open, I'm now making an adaptive component family. And I'm ready to start drafting. And what I want to do is kind of emphasize the benefit of using these points. If I select point, and, I, and I'm looking at level reference level, I'm just dropping the point right onto it. What I'm going to do is use the align tool to, to move that point. So if I pick the, the, the plane, and then the point, and the plane, and then the point, uh, what I've done is because these these planes intersect at zero zero zero, I moved my point to that location, and that means that when I bring this family into a project or into a, a mass element that I'm editing, the cursor will be attached at that at that location zero zero zero. What I've got at the moment is a is a is a, a reference point. It's not an adaptive point, so. The way I convert it is I select it and then I go up to the top here and I say uh, make adaptive. And adaptive points are uh, points that really can be anywhere in in, uh, in 3D space and you, you'll see later how we use these in creating a rigging for three-dimensional forms. <clears throat> now, now I can see the three planes that are part of that adaptive point. My technique for drafting on them I've got some options. I can either say set, and I can pick a plane. I'm going to pick the plane that is and the, is really like the the plane that's going to let me draft and bring a point out in the x direction. So I pick it. I put my, and I, I'm placing a point directly on top of the uh, and on the plane that I'd selected. When I, when I do that, I'll get a warning message that tells me that there's identical points in the same place. Well, that's okay. I know that because I just put them there. Uh, if, I, if I go and I select the reference point, I'm just being careful to select it and pull it out in the X direction. The significance of these reference points is if you look over and when they're selected, if you look over in the, uh, the property palette for the reference point, you see it has a offset property with whatever the distance is. So I can come in here and I can say 10 feet and apply. And I'm controlling the distance of that of that point from this point where it was initially placed. So what I want to do is I want to repeat that for the the Y and the Z. My, my technique would be select this plane, draw a point, ignore the message, escape, Pick the point. I can use positive or negative values to control the direction. I'm just saying here positive 10 feet. And I want to drop the way, uh, rather than using set, I can also hover over the, the plane, hit the tab key until the one that I want selects, and click to select there. Then place a point on that plane. Ignore the message. Click on the point and I'm dragging it straight up. So I'm adjusting the offset here. And I'll set that to 10 feet as well. So what I've got is an X, Y, and Z. I've got three points that are 10 feet from the adaptive point itself. I'm going to connect them up with the, with the geometry. And this is, in a sense, is the, creating the, the process of creating a kind of a rig that you will use in subsequent exercises. So under model and line here, um, I'm just going to go in and say, uh, I'm going to use a 3D snap, which was something that was introduced to the product fairly recently. But what I can do is say, overrule whatever it says up here in terms of placement planes, because now I can come in and say, I'm, I'm drawing a line that goes between that point and that, between that and that. Well, these were actually on the same plane, but the significance will be more obvious when you 
of the 3D snap will be more obvious when I do this, which is, I'm hitting escape, which is that I'm actually putting points, I'm actually connecting, snapping to things in three dimensions. Okay, the triad's almost finished, but what I want to do is I want to give them a color, um, R, G, and, and B, red, green, and blue. In fact, it's the, the same convention that we use in the product. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I go to the Manage tab. I'm going to go to Object Styles. I'm going to look at the generic models um, here. And what I'm going to do is say, let's create a subcategory of, let's call it X-Line, Y-Line, and Z-Line. And what I'll do is I'll say the X line would be red. The a Y line would be green, and the Z line will be blue. So I would just have to come back in here and say, you know, this I actually want to be of the subcategory X line projection. This one will be. Y line projection, and this one will be my Z line projection. Okay, now let's save this. So, what I'm going to do is click on the quick access toolbar save, and I'm going to point to my class folders which are under <coughs> IPD training class files. Exercises, adaptive components, class, and a point to adaptive point, a triad. And uh, you would type in my triad. I've got one already, but I'm just overruling it, overwriting it. So there's my, there's my triad. Now, the significance of where you might want to use this, um, if I go to make a new project, so I'm going to go new project. It's empty. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is go to the uh, massing in sight and say create me an in-place mass. It tells me it's turning on the display of uh, mass objects, which are in each view are normally switched off. If I draw a footprint for my building, let's just do it approximately just so you can get the concept. If I pick the, the form and say create a solid form, and if I switch to a 3D view, this is what I've drafted. I'm going to make it a little more complicated by picking the top plane and editing the profile so that I can I can put in here uh, uh, you know more complex uh, form or more, more complex closing edge to my to my model so if I looked at my building it's actually more complex in its geometry and the reason I did that was I wanted to show you that if I control tab back to the view that had the triad in it and I say load that into my project and it's the only project that was open so it loaded it into this one. Um, you see how I can pick the the face of the model and have the triad show me what is the x, y and z direction. But more significantly on this curved face, you see how it, the adaptive point is letting it adjust to the surface conditions. Let's see what's going on there. That, 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 the ability to do that is something that's uh, critical for us to create uh, complex panels. So I'll say finish mass and finish with that.